Since its release in September of 2017, Fortnite Battle Royale has transformed from a lackluster bonus game to the biggest game in the world. Over the course of just a few short months, the game shattered record after record, attracted prominent celebrities such as Drake, and gave way to events that would sell out arenas in Vegas. But not all stories related to the game are as heartwarming and successful. For some, the game has become a crutch. I sat down with an individual who says Fortnite has become nothing short of an addiction for him. My name is Miles Bloomfield, and I'm addicted to Fortnite. Like many addictions, Miles' path began innocently. A friend of mine told me about it back in January. It was a, a new concept for a game where uh, 100 players, they drop into a battlefield, and uh, they battle it out until one stands victorious. The best part about it, it was free. He told me how his gaming habits started slowly, but quickly consumed his life. When I first started playing, it was only a few times a day, here and there throughout the week. But uh, I was a full-time student with a job, so I didn't have a lot of time uh, to spare. It wasn't about till two weeks in that my hours really started to ramp up. Miles' roommate, Felton, noticed some changes in how his friend was acting. Before Fortnite, Miles was always like a really cool guy. Um, you know, he was always hanging around with our group of friends, and he was just really always awesome to be around and just a cool person to be with. Uh, I always knew he had an Xbox, but I've never really seen him play any kind of game on it. Uh, he always just used it to charge his jewel, but really, honestly, ever since Fortnite came out, things have really just um, changed. Felton described to me how he watched Miles fall deeper into the grasp of his addiction. He would always come back and just go straight into his room. He never really like a hello to anybody or like any sort of conversation whatsoever. He'd just go straight in there and you wouldn't really see him until the next day. I just couldn't wait. It was like a nagging sensation that would take over me. And I just had to get back to my room every day so I could continue to play. About three or four weeks in, I ended up quitting my job so I could spend a lot more time on Fortnite. I asked Felton what he thought when he heard about Miles quitting. I really knew things were wrong when Miles quit his job. He, he used to work at the uh, the fish department in PetSmart. There's even a story one time his coworker told me he, he had to give CPR to a betta fish after it jumped out of his bowl. And everybody in the store, you know, they hailed him as a hero. But, you know, after he left, that's when I really knew things were getting serious. I asked Miles how his addiction was evolving at this time. At this point, it wasn't just a game anymore. Fortnite had become my life. Even when I wasn't playing, I would spend my hours watching streamers on Twitch. Uh, Ninja, Myth, Summit, even that poorly fellow that really sucks. I would watch while driving, showering, sleeping, eating, everything. Hey, what time was it, by the way? Uh, 8.03? Oh. Uh, what are you doing? Shh. The item shop just updated. Uh, did you spend a lot of money on items in the game? Do you mind if I get a quick game in? It was at this point that I had to ask Miles for his phone so he wouldn't try to play during the interview. When we resumed, he answered my question. Do I spend a lot of money on in-game items? <laughs> I have every emote, every skin, every glider, every harvesting tool that has come out since the day I started playing. And as to how much he spent? <laughs> Thousands. When I run out of e-books, I buy more. It's become more valuable to me than any currency I could have imagined. Felton told me about how he noticed the changes in Miles' spending habits. I started getting extra concerned about Miles when he started being uh, more financially irresponsible and just like late on rent payments and stuff like that. It was always something that he was really on top of and kept up with and you know when I saw him do that I, I knew something was up. Uh, he still always somehow got the money together but I don't really know how and I'm not sure if I want to know how. It, it was kind of around then that I thought he was starting to hit rock bottom. But nothing could prepare Felton for what happened next. It was a Sunday night, and uh, I was just sitting in our apartment uh, watching some agricultural videos on YouTube, and I got a call from Miles saying that he dropped out of school. Yeah, dropping out of school was definitely the biggest decision I've made in my Fortnite career. I started spending so much on V-Bucks that at that point I knew I could only afford one. I couldn't pay for my tuition, my school. I thought about it long and hard for a while, but uh... When the tomato head skin came out, that's what I knew. I asked Miles how people reacted to his decision. Everybody tried to call me to change my mind. Friends, family, colleagues. But I didn't answer. I didn't have the time. 
Miles went on to tell me about how aspects of the game were working themselves into his real life. There's times where I'm walking and I have the sudden urge to just build a ramp or bust through the ceiling just to get there faster. Sometimes I'll be walking down the halls and through the wall I'll hear the chime of a chest and I can't help but try and break through to get to it. Felton says he's noticed these interactions too. When he first started playing, I'd, I'd always watch him, uh, you know, just to kind of like see what the game was all about. And I've picked up on some stuff and now he's just so obsessive over it in, in, in public. He, he's always running around doing their dances, like mimicking the emotes that, that the game offers. I was walking with Miles the other day, actually, and we passed this vending machine. I, I kept going. He, he stops dead in his tracks and is just staring at it. He runs over to the thing and he's screaming there might be a rare item inside or something. Um, I don't know, just the way people look at him, the way people look at us, I, I, you, know, you can really tell something's wrong. I asked Miles what keeps him playing. I think what really keeps me going is the thrill that you get when you're about to win a match. Anytime I reach the top 10, my palms start sweating, the hair on my back stands up. I know it's time. As to if he has any plans of stopping? Honestly, no. Um, I can only see myself playing more. The only thing that can hold me back now is the servers. I mean, hopefully, if I keep playing long enough, someone will give me money or something. You know, it just really bothers me. Like, I really want my friend back. We used to do so much together, and, you know, video games were always a thing, but, you know, whether it was playing, like, 2K or... Madden or anything, he, he just hasn't been the same since this. It's just really upsetting to know that it consumes him so much and that it's just really changed him as a person. I just, I really hope for the future he can, he can kind of get back to how, how he once was, how, how we all knew Miles. Miles is just a single example of players becoming addicted to Fortnite. As the game grows, so will cases like this. And while this video is an exaggerated example and should be looked at as satire, if you genuinely find yourself in this position, take a step back and put the controller down for a bit. Games are meant to be fun. Don't let them get in the way of your real life.